What is up guys, it's James from Fish Steaks. We're back on Flight Sim for a quick video here. Just going over a feature that I think most people who play on Xbox probably aren't aware is actually in the game. So I wanted to make people aware of it and let them know how to set it up. So maybe you've been thinking about doing one of those long haul flights. Maybe you want to go to Japan or somewhere like that, Hong Kong. And you're thinking, well, it's a nine hour flight. I don't have nine hours to sit down and spend in the game. But you wanted to do it in one sitting, well, there is actually a way to get around that, and that is by speeding up the rate of sim in the game. Now, by default, this is a feature that is turned off in the Xbox version of the game. It's not available to you upon startup, but there is a way to turn it on. So, if you are an Xbox gamer, and I know most of our viewers are, then this might be something you're not actually aware is in the game. So I'm going to show you exactly how to turn that on right now. First thing I'm going to do is come to our Options tab in the main menu. And then we're going to go to controls options. Once we're in our controls options, you can see we're under controller here. You simply come down to the miscellaneous section. And if you scroll down here, you'll see increase sim rate and decrease sim rate. And this is what we're looking for. By default, both of these boxes here will be empty. You can see I've already set mine up. So the setting I've decided to use is hold down left stick and then push up on the D-pad to increase the sim rate down on the d-pad to decrease the sim rate so to set one of these you just press a i'll clear this current input just to show you exactly how to do it now you press a here on start scanning and then you simply do the input like so and then you click validate to set it and there you go so you're going to want to set your increase sim rate and your decrease sim rate this can be any setup that you want any sort of button press or combination that you feel comfortable with this I found worked best for me it didn't interfere with anything else during gameplay so because you've got to be careful about like you don't want to use a button that is already assigned to something else if you can think of a better setup than I've got then do let me know in the comments um, and other than that I mean that's it you're now able to apply and save and you're able to increase and decrease your sim rate at will there are a couple of things to be aware of when using this and I'm going to go over that now so we're actually in four times speed right now as we're cruising over Manchester and the first thing to be aware of is if you have a particularly slow uh, or low bandwidth then this is going to put up quite a bit of more strain on your connection so there is a way around that it's quite simple you can turn off your Bing Maps data and you can turn off photogrammetry just for the duration of the speed up if it is putting a strain on your connection if you want to do that it's quite simple come to your menu and go to general options we come to data here and you can see Bing World graphics and photogrammetry are on you can simply just turn both of those off and that will significantly help with any strain on your connection but if you have got substantial bandwidth then both of those settings can be left on it's not a problem the other thing to be aware of is if you do use ATC or air traffic control, they do not like sim speed up. So I fully recommend turning ATC off in the settings. I'll give you an example in just a second of what I'm talking about. So as you can see guys, we have reached the cruise section of this current flight and you might notice the plane is dipping and diving and dipping and diving. Now this is not due to you, it's not due to poor um, setup for your autopilot, it's not due to you being a poor pilot, it's fully due to what I can only assume is a bug in the speed up, um, but it does cause the plane to, to dip and dive like this once you've reached the cruising altitude. If you actually come in and look at the altimeter, you can see it flying up and down through thousands of feet. Now, it's not a problem in terms of autopilot, it will still follow your path that you've selected, but it is an issue for air traffic control. They obviously don't like the plane dipping and diving through these thousands of feet at a time. And if I just show you, if I turn it on, you will see they will constantly ask me to return to my cruising flight level constantly as you can see over and over again if you look at the nav there you can see we are still following our path it's not a problem for autopilot but this but atc will not stop requesting this as we fly so as i'm sure you can imagine on the longer flights this will get incredibly annoying and this is in times four speed and if we if we slow the plane back down you can see we're now back into normal speed the plane will start to settle on its cruising altitude again so it's not a problem 
as long as you come out of the speed up before you begin your descent. It's absolutely no issue in terms of the autopilot. It's just an issue for ATC because they will not shut up. So I'm going to quickly show you how to turn that off just in case you don't know. You're going to come to your general options. You're just going to go to sound. And you're going to go to ATC text to speech settings and just turn that from Azure to off. And what this means is that ATC will still be active in the background and your AI co-pilot, if you've got him set to use the ATC, then he will continue to do so, but you just don't have to hear it. So if you're using the, the sim speed up, then you don't have to worry about constantly being told off by the ATC as you dip and dive through those altitudes. And the final thing to be aware of, guys, as you might have noticed, is there is no indication in the game itself of what level of sim speed you're on. So you can go for... You know, a one time speed up, two times, three times, or you can go all the way to four. And each time you up the level of sim, there is no indication from the game of what level of sim you are at, sim speed you are at, I should say. So just make note of how many times you pressed it because you are going to want to return to normal speed before you attempt any sort of landing. Trying to land sped up is an absolute disaster believe me just try and pay attention to how many times you're using it if you are ever unsure and you do forget four times is the maximum you can speed up so if you're ever unsure of what level you're at just speed up four times and then slow down four times and you'll be back to normal speed and that's pretty much it guys so now you can enjoy doing those long haul flights in one sitting if you want i love flying to japan myself i love going from helsinki to japan so I'm sure there are other flights out there that you guys have perhaps thought about undertaking. You sit there and you think, oh, I can't do nine hours in one sitting. Well, speed it up to four and you're talking, you know, around, around about two hours for the flight. Much more manageable and you can get a little bit more enjoyment out of the game. So, yeah, just a quick one to cover that setting. Before I go, I do want to mention that we have heard you guys and the ILS landing video will come next. I'm going to start working on that right away as soon as I wrap up with this video. But if this did help you out, if you did learn anything new, then do give us a like on the video. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. We do appreciate all the support and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.